and a very good afternoon from Newark Liberty International Airport's brand new Terminal A. Today I'm flying on a United 8020 up to Boston. Let's get inside the terminal and see what it's like. Welcome inside the brand new Terminal A. This terminal is built as the predecessor to the old Terminal A, replacing the nearly 50-year-old three concourses comprising the old terminal. This new terminal is built on former postal service facilities and stands for parked aircrafts. Compared to the antiquated, soon-to-be-demolished Terminal A, this new one is absolutely amazing. Part of the old terminal was closed for demolition on September 30th, 2021 to make way for the brand new terminal that I'm flying out of today. Terminal A does not have any concourses, but rather one large building with security on the outside and one large concourse connecting all gates airside. So, what are the differences between the new and old Terminal A? Well, for starters, there is an insane amount of light that this terminal building lets in. This was achieved by building a high roof, areas with lots of windows, and having modern LED lighting fixtures. Much like some European airports such as Prague, they're no longer check-in counters, but rather kiosks. Check-in counters have been replaced with baggage drop and customer service desks. Currently, the only airlines serving the new Terminal A are Air Canada, American, United, and JetBlue. After making it through the fast, efficient, but rather empty security line, I'm in the main secure area. Along with the opening of the new Terminal A came another way to get around Newark Airport. Besides the air train monorail system that the airport uses, passengers can now transfer between terminals via the use of a shuttle bus that leaves every 10 to 20 minutes depending on the time of day. As per any airline terminal, there are plenty of duty-free shops and eateries. Throughout the terminal, there are numerous billboards and signs promoting New Jersey businesses, celebrities, and schools such as these pillars, or massive college sign for Rutgers University in the middle of the terminal concourse. At each gate, there are large LED screens displaying trivia questions or interesting facts about the state of New Jersey. These screens also serve a function as status boards when flights are boarding at their respective gates. In the distance, you can see the old Terminal A already partially demolished. The end of Terminal A are gates A15 through 22. Here there are numerous restaurants as well as a children's play area. Each and every single gate has adequate seating areas with there being more than enough power ports and power outlets at each gate. Here at gate A19 is my flight up to Boston. This Airbus A320, registered November 466 Uniform Alpha, was delivered new to United in November of 2000. This aircraft was 22.5 years old at the date when I flew on it. As boarding commenced a few minutes ahead of schedule, I headed to my seat, 25F. At each seat, there is a literature pocket, coat hanger hook, tray table, and a small seat back pocket similar to what you find on Spirit Airlines. 
As for legroom, it's outstanding for such a short flight. One downside to United's new slimline AT20s is that they don't feature USB ports or power outlets. So if you're flying on this plane during a longer flight, you better bring a power bank or have your computer charged. United features free movies and TV shows through the Wi-Fi on board this AT20, but doesn't feature a device holder like their other aircrafts, such as their 737 Maxes, do. Here's our takeoff from runway 4 left at Newark. As this flight is under one hour in length, there is no substantial in-flight service besides this cup of water. Here's our descent and landing into runway 4 right at Boston Logan International Airport. Overall, I rate this flight a 10 out of 10. Despite there being no substantial meal or drink service, I don't think it is needed on a short 45 minute flight like this one. While the lack of power outlets was not an issue on this flight, United's A320 sometimes operate flights upwards of 3 hours in length. Being stuck on an aircraft for 3 hours with no power outlets or USB ports just downright sucks. Especially in 2023, when most airlines have at least USB ports on board, this is a very disappointing product in this sense. Besides this, the seat is great. With that being said, I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to like and subscribe. Please comment down below as I'm always open to suggestions on how to improve my content. With that being said, have a good day or night wherever you are in the world. Peace.